Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Boy, I uh, tell you what, when you're healthy, it's easy to forget what misery sickness is. I had a rough couple of weeks, so two and a half weeks. And then it got cold for a week, which made the cough just hang on, you know. It was rough. But anyway, I did manage to get my doublet up. I haven't had it up in a couple of months, and I really missed the antenna. It's definitely, after two years um, since I built it, I've used it quite a bit, and it is definitely my favorite wire antenna. I've had people recommend things like a double bazooka and some of the other more complex builds, but really, the doublet, um, it's such an easy antenna to put together, and we'll, we'll show the design here in a moment. Um, it's very agile. It, it easily covers all the bands that I need. Uh, it's, it's a great antenna. I, I just don't really have any uh, incentive to build a, another variant of it because it works. So yeah, I'm out here in uh, my quiet spot. There's still a lot of RVs out here though. Um, looking back towards the front, you can see all the RVs off in the desert. But I, looking around the other way, am right on the edge of the area, and it's just raw desert out past me. And it's getting uh, sparser and sparser as the days go by and the temperatures come up and uh, um, the other RVers are leaving. A lot of people don't like the heat out here in the desert. I do. And oh yeah, uh, summer haircut. Ta-da! I'm bald again. <laughs> got the clippers out. <laughs> and I've had people comment on the hat. Uh, Garrett hat. Yeah, I've got a Garrett metal detector. And if I uh, travel and find a place that's conducive to metal detecting, I'll probably do a metal detecting video. Um, so yeah, that answers that. Uh, so, the doublet design. Real simple antenna. Uh, here's a, a picture of my design. Well, my antenna, which is, is about as basic as you can get. It's fed with a parallel feeder, a window line in my case, or you can use ladder line. It's basically a dipole. It's symmetrical. Um, both of the uh, uh, antenna elements are exactly the same length. I mean, down to the inch, they're, they're exactly the same length, so it's very symmetrical. Uh, there's a four to one ballon that I uh, built that's at the uh, end of it. And then a short piece of coax comes into my LDG Z11 Pro tuner. And from there, through an SWR meter to my radio. And uh, that gets you, well, with the 120 foot um, version, now you can make it a little bit longer. I fiddled around with it, making it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. I found that at 120 feet, with the length of feed line that I have, it tunes on all the bands from 80 meters up through six meters. Um, everything, even 60 meters, works great on all of them too. Um, it's uh, very agile. Um, the ballon. So I'm using a four to one ballon um, to bring the impedances down a bit and that makes it a little easier for the antenna tuner to match. Some antenna tuners have a built-in ballon. You just bring your, uh, your parallel feeder right to the antenna tuner. That's the best case scenario. That short piece of coax that I have between the uh, tuner and the ballon, that's going to have high SWR on it. And uh, that's where your loss is going to be. Um, the twin lead, you don't have hardly any loss on at all. But um, the other thing that I noticed that I believe is, is being caused by the ballon is that it is low noise. Uh, I've, I noticed right off when I started using this antenna that it's, it's quiet. It, it doesn't suffer as much from locally generated noise as other variants of a dipole that I've used have. And I believe a lot of that is to do with the ballon. Now, as I showed you, there's a lot of RVs out here. And a lot of RVs on the, in the off-grid um, genre, which is what most of us are out here, have solar panels for power, solar charge controllers, and most of them run an inverter. And inverters are noisy, seriously noisy. I mean, inverters really kick off a lot of hash. We'll see that in the demo. Um, and with the, ballon, with the ballon on there, I believe it also acts like a common mode choke. So um, let's go look at the ballon design. Now, this is a, a real common four to one ballon design. And 
it's real simple. You wind two cores the same way you would wind one if you were making a common mode choke out of it. And then you connect them like shown here in this schematic where you uh, join um, one of the output uh, side leads. The other two go to your feeder, your parallel line. And on the input side, you just parallel the two cores. And that makes a four to one impedance transmission. But if you'll notice from looking at this design, it's also very symmetrical. So common mode currents, noise, locally generated noise that gets picked up on the antenna and the feed line, it comes down the feed line in uh, sy symmetrical and identical in phase. I mean, it's, it's common mode. And the cores, I believe, just act like a choke. Since this ballon is a completely symmetrical design, I think it acts like a choke. And it chokes off some of that noise. Um, that was suggested back when I built the, the uh, doublet. Somebody had suggested that in the comments. Actually, a few people did. And indeed, in practice, that's what I have observed. So let's go look at a couple of demos um, comparing, well, actually, I'm going to compare it um, to another antenna. I have my elk pack uh, end fed halfway for 40 meters up as well. And that's a real common design. It uses the 49 to 1 that Steve Ellington popularized uh, at the end. Um, it's a regular old end fed uh, half wave antenna like a lot of people are using. And um, it's noisy compared to the doublet. I mean, you know, it's noise, it's noise pickup is probably what you're used to seeing on a lot of antennas. But I, I think you'll, you'll agree when you see the difference between the two that the doublet is a lot quieter. Four days of preparation. In the end, they brought home 131 drumming display by OT-Hall. These are tested positive for highly compassionate souls. They're both intuition and different message. We'll be right back. So please, stay with us here on Supreme Master Television. There are many more ways you can protect the world and ourselves. Think and be inventive in your daily activities, news and Well, as you could see from the short wave station, the uh, noise floor came up on the end fed half wave. Signals didn't drop much, but on the doublet it was much quieter and clearer. Now here we are on 40 meters, which is where the elk pack antenna is resonant. And right now we are on the doublet. And uh, let's see if we got a fairly consistent signal to watch here. Yeah, this guy right here. Okay, he's peeking right around there. I'm going to switch to the unfed half wave. Now you can see his signal didn't drop much at all, if any. But you can see that uh, by the blue getting a little lighter that the noise floor came up. But look at this. You see this squiggly kind of malformed thing here and here and here? That's hash noise from an inverter. Now there was a big noise source right there. And this is on the end fed half wave. All right. <laughs> Let's move a little bit here. I'm trying to, I don't... We can, we can listen to the noise when I make the switch. But uh, pay attention to this hash. These are, these are inverters from other RVs around me. That's the kind of a hash noise that you see from an inverter, right? So watch that when I switch to the doublet. This is the doublet. And as you can see, that hashy noise just completely went away, leaving us with just signals. Um, Let's uh, go ahead and open the squelch so we can hear the difference. And I'll find a signal that we can listen to. Now this is the doublet. I'm going to switch to the unfed half wave. So you could hear that his... Uh, signal was still fine and readable the noise floor only came up a tiny bit but boy this hash noise we can really hear it here we'll go back to the doublet back to the end fed half wave and I can hear that crackling coming back from the uh, inverter that it's picking up 
there are some frequency ranges where um, it seems like inverters are more of a problem. Oh well, 15 meters is. Let's let's see if we can spot some here. Well, there, we'll look for some noise. There we go. Around 13 megahertz, which you know you might be around this frequency if you're shortwave listening. This this is again the unfed half wave. Now we'll go to the doublet. Okay, I got updates. Oh boy, we'll do those later. There's the doublet. Somebody's bound to ask, well, what about your inverter in your RV? Um, is it less noisy with your inverter? Well, I hardly ever turn my inverter on. Um, I use it if I have to run a power tool or test equipment, but other than that, I have converted pretty much everything here to run directly off the 12 volts. Uh, the exception being the laptop to charge it. Um, I bought a DC to DC converter that goes directly from 12 volts to 19 volts eliminating the extra stage of stepping 12 volts up to 120 with the inverter and then back down to 19 for the laptop. Um, but uh, I hardly ever turn my inverter on, so I don't deal with my own inverter noise much. But just for completeness, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the SDR and I'll uh, show you what my inverter does. Okay, I'm gonna find a quiet spot for this um, and I'll turn on my inverter, hold on. Okay, so here we are. No signals, but we're on 40 meters. I'm going to go to the NFED half wave. And I'm going to turn on my inverter. So, yeah. As you can see, <laughs> my inverter creates a ton of noise. I'm going to switch to the doublet now. And I've still got a lot of noise from my inverter. You can see the vertical stripes here. You know those other wavy hash things? They could be MPPT charge controllers. My inverter anyway, well it's a pure sign. It produces these uh, vertical bars, but you can see I've still got a lot of noise from my inverter. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the inverter. There you see the noise went away. You can see where it ended. So it's not as bad as on the end fed half wave. Let me turn my inverter back on. And I'll switch back to the end fed half wave. And you can see it's much, much worse and I'll turn the inverter off. So there you go. That's the kind of noise you deal with if you run an inverter for your solar power system. So as you could see, uh, the noise floor really came down on the doublet and the signals didn't as much or at all. In some cases they got a little stronger. So um, yeah, the doublet with the Balan is definitely a quiet antenna um, and a great performing antenna. I mean, the pros, I had a note here to do pros and cons in the conclusion. Um, it's very agile. You know, since it's a non-resonant antenna and you're using a tuner, it's easy to have a, a single antenna that's going to cover a great many bands and perform well. That's, that's the thing. I've used like a regular center-fed, coax-fed um, dipole in the past and used an antenna tuner to bring it onto other bands, but I always noticed you know, if I had an 80 meter dipole and I tuned it up on 40, it would do it would do fine. On on 20, it would do okay. Maybe not as great as a resonant 20 meter dipole. You know, and the higher up I went in frequency, the farther I went off, of, you know, from its resonant frequency, the lower the performance was. It, it just got a little less sensitive, you know, and, and didn't feel like it got out very well. Um, with the doublet. Its performance is just bang on on every band. Once I once I tune it up with the tuner, it's sensitive and people hear me um, at QRP levels. You know, so it, it really performs very well on all the bands you tune it for. It's very very simple to build. It's just a wire dipole directly connected to the feed line up at the center, so super easy to put up and it's durable because it's simple uh, with a nice strong center insulator. You know, it, it could be up for years. Um, 
decades maybe even if you know if, if your uh, window line and everything else holds up it's just a real simple and solid and durable antenna um, it's also a great antenna for shortwave listening and just receiving uh, i use it for just about everything i receive the am broadcast band with it and i hear a lot of stations it really works great on an am as an am uh, receive antenna all the ham bands of course but i also use it um to receive a broadcast FM. <laughs> it's not an optimal antenna for it, but it's really sensitive. I'm sitting out here in the desert and I'm picking up FM stations from Phoenix, which is, you know, two, 200 miles away. Um, a little bit of hiss on them, a little bit of fry, you know, but it, it works pretty well even in the FM broadcast band. So it's a great kind of all-in-one solution. You know, if, you, if you've got enough room to put up one antenna or you, you don't want to you know, have to deal with a bunch of different antennas. Um, the doublet is probably the way to go. So two years on, it's still my favorite uh, all-in-one solution antenna. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.